It was probably a law by now, as irrefutable as that of gravity. Yuki Moda would always have the exuberance and enthusiasm and height of a child. It had been a long time since Thea Garner had been in Domino City. Her studies in New York had her busier than she'd ever been, and she barely even found time to call her friends anymore. Instead, she made a point to write a long email every weekend, usually on Saturday evenings. But she had finally been able to set aside two weeks to come home, and to say that Yugi was excited to see her would have been a criminal understatement. He was explosive. Taya! Yugi! Hey, how's it going, Taya? Great! Things are going really well. I have performance lined up for next month. Well, no kidding? That's awesome! You gotta film it for us or something. You know, see what all that school's done for you. You guys are looking good. How's it been going for you all? Eh, not too shabby. I'm looking into buying a place up the street, closer to the workplace, you know? It's small, but it'll work for me. Might know the owner. Started saving up a couple months back. Really? Good for you! Grandpa and Professor Hawkins are planning a trip to Egypt soon. You know, for old time's sake. I can only imagine what those two will get up to. What about you, Tristan? What have you been doing? <sighs> uh, nothing really. What's with you? Sorry, Taya. Didn't get to sleep till about three last night. How come? This whole college thing. Going to Westridge now, and I... Uh, ran into Jackass McMoron last night. Who? Eh? You know, Mohawk. Bracelets, simple plan. Guy split. Soon as he saw me. Guy named, uh, Kearns? That it? Matt Kearns? Ah, I think so. Anyways, sleaze job. Teenage punk trying to act tough. You know, like me. Only stupider. <laughs> oh, way to steal my joke, Joey. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, anyway, Tris and me, we're keeping an eye out on this guy. Been homing in on the wrong target, right? Guy thinks it's cool to mess around with Mokuba. You guys are... working for Kaiba? No, Mokuba Hawthorne. Of course, Kaiba. Yeah, so anyways, Kaiba kinda... hired us, I guess you could call it. We're, uh, looking out for Mokuba, so... Anyway, we ain't getting paid either, so... It ain't even really work. You do know what that man did. Well, I know he's building a hospital. Don't think that's what you're talking about, though. Pfft, figures. It just figures. Finds a way to ruin everything. What's your deal all of a sudden? This! I wanted to go directly to him about this. But I guess there's no reason. Sato Kaiba, the 17-year-old CEO of the Kaiba Electronic Gaming Corporation, shot and killed a rival business tycoon this evening. The brutal murder which took place on the front lawn of the victim's home and the refusal by local law enforcement officials to take action against Mr. Kaiba have been described as the most blatant display of corruption in California's legal history. Taya looked at her friend after he'd finished reading, expecting him to say something, to react. Clearly, he was expected to be shocked and disgusted, angry, maybe even betrayed. But Joey said none of these things. In fact, he didn't say anything. He just... <laughs> ah. I, oh, God. Oh, uh, what? Huh? What's so funny? Uh, nothing. Just, uh, don't go to Kaiba about this. You ain't gonna say anything. One thing, Kaiba was 18, not 17. Mokuba told me. He wasn't on the front lawn either. He was in the parlor. Saw it myself, sorta. Hell of a shot. You'd have thought he got trained by the frickin' Marines. Far as I know, he was. You... You were there? Oh yeah, I was there all right. Let me see that paper, would ya? This is just... STUPID! They don't have one detail in 20. You see this, Joe? Don't even mention the sleaze bucket's name. Huh. Dressed up a tabloid in a fancy suit. This is shoddier than something you'd find on the back of a napkin. Where'd you even get this, Taya? Uh, I just, uh, one of those dispensers. You know, like the ones outside the grocery store. Why? Are you saying Kaiba didn't kill anybody? What I'm saying is that it ain't as simple as kill or didn't kill. There is such a thing as self-defense, but you wouldn't know it from that thing. I wonder why I don't believe that. Tristan was the only one to see it immediately. Yugi would see it soon enough. But even he didn't understand Joey's moods as well as Tristan. 
who had seen the blonde fight enough times to be able to read him as easily as an LED screen when it came to stuff like this. Taya didn't see it at all. I think Kaibo would. Tristan thought idly, and not for the first time over the past year marveled at the similarities between his best friend and the man who had once been at the top of his guys I'd like to punch in the throat list. As soon as he thought it, though, he was sure of it. Kaiba would have known what this was. Battle fever. Believe it or don't, it don't change facts. You're, You're getting, getting as protected, protected of the guy's, guy's reputation, reputation as Mokuba. Sorry, Joey. I just don't believe it. I know enough about Kaiba that it just doesn't- You don't know Kaiba from Rockefeller. Mokuba would slap you for saying that, and I'm disinclined to say he'd be wrong about it. You're not listening, but I guess that's no surprise. This is supposed to be a nice day. And you're turning it into an argument, Taya. I'm the one turning it yes, to- Yes, Taya, you are. Let's play the what-if game, Taya. What if I was walking home with you, and someone came up behind us and grabbed me? What if this person had a weapon, and I was about to die? What if you had a gun in your backpack? What would you do? You should have taken up debate in high school. I- I would try to shoot, if I knew- knew how to. Kaiba knows how. He did what he had to. Ready to hear the whole story, Taya? You'll have to be more specific, Mokuba. Once, just once, just one time, Mokuba would have liked to see his brother react to a personal attack on his character with more than a cursory, purely analytical glance. Most of him was impressed that Sado refused to let things of this nature bother him. But the rest of him was peeved, because it made his anger at things of this nature seem so... shallow. It, it says you... You shouldn't let it bother you, kid. Enough people got it right that this is no more valid than any other political spin. So someone else wants to paint me as a murderer? Let them. This may just help me in the long run. <laughs> Nisama, you... Hey, it's alright, kiddo. Come on. Don't let this get you worked up. We know what happened. And they should too. I want to see somebody thank you for once. Just once. How come everything you do has to be evil to them? Jerks. Stupid jerks. I hate them. Oh, now. You don't hate them. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Mokuba, you thank me. That's enough for me. Ironically enough, so did Wheeler now that I think of it. Told you he wasn't a total moron. I've yet to see conclusive evidence of that. An anomaly of mental aptitude. That's all. <laughs> Nisama, don't ever change. Okay? The problem was complacency. It was a common trap, of course, one even the most vigilant can fall prey to. And while Mokuba Kaiba was far more vigilant than most ten-year-olds, he was still a ten-year-old. It would have been a safe assumption to say he never saw it coming. And the second safe assumption would be that he kicked himself because of that any number of times. He walked across the parking lot of Oakwood Elementary alone. Well, almost alone. Backpack slung over his shoulder in a good enough mood to actually wave as he glanced at the throng of people pointing and gaping at him, which elicited a collective scream of joy from some of the more excitable set. They'd learned from previous experience that actually approaching Mokuba was a bad idea, because Seto apparently knew every phone number in Domino City, and the children were easy to intimidate. But that didn't stop his fans, who were becoming more and more numerous the more often he found himself on television, from following him at a distance. But for the moment, he wasn't thinking of anything in particular, except, distantly, when Sato would be home. One of his few duties as honorary vice president of Kaiba Corp, which he thought of more as a perk, was to test new projects once in the final stages of production. And this day, he was particularly engrossed. It's an extension of what Crawford was out to do. He wanted magic and wizards to be widespread, worldwide. And he's largely succeeded. But there's been a distinct shift, especially over the past few years, towards fully electronic entertainment. So to keep the game alive, 
You made a video game version of Magic and Wizards. Exactly. Mokuba now played the latest prototype of what had been tentatively called Magic and Wizards, Call of the Millennium, and it helped him rap. He finally understood those few years when Seto had never been seen without his deck in hand, or at least in pocket. This game really was addicting. So addicting, in fact, that he did not bother to look up as he approached his brother's limousine. He did not notice that the man holding the door open for him was not Travis Copeland. Although he did wear the standard issue badge bearing the Kaiba Corp logo, nor did he notice that, once free of the parking lot, the vehicle went in the precise opposite direction of his home. How is school, little master? He almost answered, but then he remembered. Being related to Seto, Mokuba had been called any number of titles, most of which made him uncomfortable. Mokuba Sama, Young Master, and Young Sir were some of the more common ones. Seto's associates, employees, reporters, talk show hosts, members of his fan club, the fact that he even had a fan club was kind of flattering, but mostly just creepy. All used one of several titles and honorifics, as if omitting them would call Seto's wrath upon them. Some of the bitter ones used them sarcastically, and those were slightly better only because it was then that Seto's wrath was called upon them, and Seto had come up with many, many ways to make people feel like dirt. He had only heard the very particular little master from one person. It was the glint of adrenaline. The game was on. Saru Watari, 